Sylvester Show Initiate. Hi there, Initiates. It's time to continue our journey through this. If you didn't watch the last episode, watch it. But do it later. All you have to know right now is this. When they were making Harvester, they used a casting agency to fulfill many of the roles. The name of the casting agency was Peggy Taylor Talent, and this was their agency directory at the time. In the last episode, we checked out which actresses on Harvester were from the pages of this. There's still men, girls and boys left, and now we focus on men. So let's see... The first familiar face here is Charlie Beecham, also known as Charles Beecham. He did the role of the Postmaster Boyle. Oh my god, I can't believe it. After all this time... Now I should point out that there's certain good and evil theme on Harvester. What does this mean? I mean, some of the good characters in town had their evil version in Lodge, although sometimes it's hard to tell the difference. For example, Postmaster Boyle should be the good one, but he has one very bad habit. He's an arsonist. The evil version of him is the membership director in the second level of the Lodge. Played by Charlie Beecham, of course. Let me see. Oh yes, the new initiate. I'm the Lodge membership director. What can I do for you? Is he more evil? He doesn't do anything evil. But he works for the Lodge, so maybe that's evil enough. The second familiar face here is John Brooke. He did the role of the war veteran in the Lodge. My country paid me to kill. And then when I came home, I was out of a job. They expected me to stop? There's one strange thing in this scene. At first Steve enters a place where there are three dead bodies, a woman and two kids. Everything here indicates that this is some kind of a primitive cottage in a jungle. When Steve steps out, there's a crazy war veteran under palm trees. This all reminds me of the Vietnam War, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. And this is the strange part. In the game, the year is 1953, but Vietnam War began in 1955. They never mention Vietnam in the game, but in the credits, the victims of the war veteran are Vietnamese. Hey, I love details. The next one here is... Bob Cowley. You recognize him? I wouldn't, because he looks so... normal. He was the actor of Mr. Johnson. Some rotten son bitch scratched my car! My Tucker, my baby, my poor darling, my sweet cheeks! Bob Cowley is better known as Robert F. Cowley. He has been in several movies and TV series, but is usually uncredited. Bob passed away in July 2014. His last movie was a short flick named Bail Out, where he did the role of Uncle Charlie. And you can see him in the trailer. I need you to take over the business before I kick the bucket. Twice! Let me think about it. Think fast. Still looks pretty normal to me. Unlike Mr. Johnson. Did you hear that Karen disappeared? Just goes to show you what can happen without a man's stewardship in the house. This guy really gives me the creeps. In the game he just sits on his yard. But everything he says is repulsive. And he's so obsessed with Edna. Edna this and Edna that. I mean... Karen's only five years old. What? Since Mr. Fitzpatrick passed away, Edna's been raising Karen yeah, but, on her own. Uh, yeah. Why do you care? What a shame. To deprive a little girl of a positive male role model. Well, you got the point there. And her mama of a fine, stiff penis. Here we go again. Mr. Johnson, you are sick. You always were a kid. I mean it. Go away! Bye now. Back to the agency directory. The next one here is... Let's see... 
John Kaufman. You can tell immediately that he was the gladiator in the third level of the lodge. The lodge is the mystery of mercy. Life is a competition, and mercy a perversion of the natural order. Now we can get back to the good and evil theme. You see, the gladiator was supposed to have a good version of him in the town. How do I know that? Because the game files contain two unused character portraits of John Kaufman as a good guy. What I don't know is the reason why they didn't use the character. And what is he anyway? Range Rider's stupid looking sidekick? Speaking of which, the next one here is Charlie Latch. And I'm sure you know who he was. Leave me alone, will ya? This is the good part. Range Rider is the star of his own extremely gory TV show. Because of the show, he appears in various places in the game. For example, Steve's little brother watches the show. And you can see Range Rider in Mrs. Phelps's store. You can also see and hear him in the billiard room in the first level of the lodge. And what's your name, hombre? Steve's a swell name. My dog's name is Steve. Would you like my autograph, Steve? He is even in the very last room of the lodge, before the final. Stay tuned. Oh, and you can get an autographed photo of him. Although it's totally useless. When I was making this episode, it came to me as a surprise that Range Rider is actually a parody of a real TV series named Range Rider. Yes. Where the deer and the antelope play. And who could be more at home on the range than the Range Rider? With his thrilling adventures of the great outdoors. Range Rider was aired from 1951 to 1953. He was a heroic character who defeated the bad guys and saved the day. He also treated Indians fair-minded. Unlike this guy here. Shit! Ow! Shit on a stickeroo! At first I thought that Range Rider must be as boring as John Wayne Westerns. But boy was I wrong. There's lots of action and the stunts are amazing. Look at this fight for example. <laughs> It's like Jackie Chan in Wild West. Or Bruce Lee. To me, there's just one problem. I've played Harvester almost two decades. So when I watch Range Rider, all I can think is Range Rider. Uh, they get mixed up in my head. And what I see is something like this. Ah! Oh, shit! Ow! Oh, shit on a stickeroo! Can't help myself. Race Rider is one of those characters who has the evil version of him in the lodge. Welcome to the Harvest Moon Art Gallery, sir. I'm the curator of this place. So delighted you could come. You can find the curator in the second level of the lodge. And he is played, of course, by Charlie Latch. If only it were that simple. I know some of the fans really love Range Rider. And I tried to track down Charlie Latch. And I succeeded. Although at first he didn't even remember being Range Rider. And he didn't know what Harvester was. I soon found out why. To the fans, Range Rider is an epic character. But to the actor, it was a one-day job. Charlie just showed up and took direction, like he explained it to me. He had no idea what the project was, what his character was about, or how the finished product would look like. So you can imagine it's easy to forget a filming day like that. And he never even saw the script, so it's obvious he didn't do the voice acting. I asked if Charlie has done any other acting jobs. He told me that he did some occasional work through Peggy Taylor talent at the time. 
He also did some trade show work and represented Cadillac at a number of auto shows across the USA. Acting and modeling was a hobby for him. His profession is high tech, and now he's working for Hewlett Packard. Oh, and his wife is really the actor in the family. And also she is here. Cindy Latch. Charlie got to know Peggy Taylor's talent through her. So, thanks Cindy. It must have been quite a surprise for Charlie to find out that he is one of the most legendary characters in a cult classic PC game. I know, I would be surprised. Charlie has now bought Harvester and he's playing the game, so I'm really happy I was able to reach him. So, greetings to Charlie. And if you ever create a Facebook profile, don't forget to like Harvester fan page. The next one here is... Colonel Mason. Now here's a special looking guy. He did the role of Mr. Pastorelli, who doesn't speak. He just sweeps the floor in his barbershop. To be honest, at first I thought that Colonel Mason looked like that only in the agency directory to get some weirder roles. But then I found this from early 90s. There he is on the left with his co-workers in KDNT radio station in Texas. So he really looked like that. And looking weird is always cool. Mr. Pastorelli is maybe the only major character in the game who doesn't speak, but he was supposed to speak. Once again I know this because the game files contain character portraits of him, and even five of them. It's a mystery to me why they decided to make Mr. Pastorelli mute, but maybe we'll find out that in the upcoming episodes. The evil version of Mr. Pastorelli is the maintenance man in the second level of the lodge. Excuse me, you can't come in right now, I just mopped the floor. Like Mr. Pastorelli, he sweeps the floor, but unlike Mr. Pastorelli, he speaks and he is very aggressive. You think just because I'm a janitor I got no pride? That's all I got to do all day is clean up after you rich bastards? Big eyes before you get hurt! By the way, this childhood photo of Mr. Pastorelli is actually the fourth grade photo of Michael Napodano, the man who sent me this. Greetings to Michael too. The next one is Travis Miller. These days he is acting in Artisan Center Theater in Hearst, Texas. It's so hard to believe that this Santa Claus looking guy actually did the role of <laughs> Mr. Potsdam, Stephanie's dad. Mr. Potsdam is such a good parent. Like every caring dad, he likes to know what his daughter is doing in her room, especially when there's a visitor. He also likes kids, or at least he likes to molest Karen. That child needs a father. Well, I guess you are right about that. And Edna, she needs a good hard Jesus pace. Christ. Not again. Bye now. Mr. Potsdam doesn't have an evil version of him in the lodge. He is in the lodge himself, and that's evil enough. The next one is Bill Nelson. He did the role of Mr. Parson, better known as Clem. Them aliens is wily, Pete. He don't cross the intergalactic void without learning a trick or two. The most memorable thing about Clem is that he hunts aliens. And that's why there is an alien on the wall of the barbershop. What? You think you can get one of those and just swap me? That's also the reason why I have this. His name is Mr. Moose. The evil version of Clem is the cloakroom attendant in the first level of the lodge. This is a cloakroom, sir. By definition, not a fitting place to seek answers. He is not very evil. <coughs> Let's move on. The next familiar face here is... Richard Rusky. He did the role of Mr. Swell. The friend of Clem. Pastorelli ought to look into some, but I can't get him to understand a word I say. The evil version of Mr. Swell is the valet. You are the exterminator, are you not? He is the first person Steve meets in the lodge. They need exterminating or, to be blunt, sir, 
they need killing. Back to the agency directory. The next and the last one here is Peter van der Vliet. He was the actor of Deputy Loomis. Oh, oh, bad George. Oh, bad Germany. Loomis likes pornography. Therefore, Steve has to go to Mrs. Phelps' store and buy a girly magazine for him. A girly magazine? Or like they say it in the French version of Harvester, Magazine Olé Olé. A magazine Olé Olé? <laughs> Loomis is very pleased and he goes to jail to enjoy the magazine. Oh, <gasps> Unfortunately, that Sheriff Gray finds out what he's doing. Wait, no, no. And the result is shocking. Oh. Uh. A beating without blood and gore. This must be the biggest surprise in the whole game. The evil version of Deputy Loomis is the beggar in the third level of the lodge. Welcome to the temple of the mystery of charity. Compared to Deputy Loomis, the beggar is totally fucked up. Charity is a loathsome lie. The only gift that keeps on giving is death. And there were all the men. In the next episode of the Harvester Show, we focus on girls and boys. There's so much to tell about them. For example, Edna's daughter she Karen. Needs a good fuck hard. off!